I really don't know about anybody else, but if you did not have one of these growing up on your fridge, you really missed out. I have missed mine horribly, and I want one back really bad. Finishing up the dishes, though. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Homeowner Series. I'm your host, the Rattleman Buck. Today, we're going to be heading back up to the cabin for part two. I've been trying to decipher which areas I want to tackle, and I think we're going to do a bit of the demolition work as well as dig up that septic tank. Getting the 6-7 warmed up. It says it's 64 on the monitor, but of course we know this is Nebraska weather. That's actually 27 degrees, and it is a lying sack of garbage. Sadly, Daryl, Corey, or Kevin are not able to come out with me. It is getting close to Easter weekend, so they are going to be out of state or busy, leaving me to do all of the tasks that we have to do today alone. Doesn't really bother me, though. I'm going to get myself on the road. I do need to go and pick up a mini excavator and some gardening tools from Home Depot. Just in case we run into any troubles, we have the tools on hand. We'll see you guys here in a little bit, and we'll get on with today's video. The tools now loaded up, we're making our way. If you guys like content like this and would love to see more, I'd absolutely adore it if you guys could smash that like button, subscribe down below. We are on the race to 100,000 public subscribers by the end of this year, and anyone and everybody does help. We do stream live on TikTok as well as YouTube throughout the week and on Saturdays so I can broadcast more content to you guys. In the month of April, there is some big news, though. I will be moving, so I'm going to try my best to stay as up to par with content and consistency as possible. But life is life, guys. Life is life. I apologize for last week. Same thing kind of happened. Just life kicked me in the butt. But that's all right. We got a little bit of a drive, though, to get up to this cabin. I'm going to make one quick pit stop, fuel up, and we'll see you guys at the cabin. Two hours later. Finally getting our way out of here. We had a little bit of an ordeal happen. The I was supposed to rent a bobcat, but I got there, and the one that I was supposed to rent actually got rented out before I got there. It didn't bounce around too badly. But I do know that this is a bit heavier than I thought it was, so it's just been watching the trailer, watching the mirrors, making sure we have adequate time to break. The 6-7, though, really did do a good job of towing. I, we, I went out with Spencer and Grant the other day, and they have a new Chevy pickup that they pull with, and it's a gasser, and you could definitely tell how much more gutless it was compared to the diesels. Arriving out at the cabin, I'm going to place this over by our little shed. Our first task of the day is I'm going to do a little bit of demolition work slash recovery work. I've already gotten a hold of my local scrapyard. What they're going to do is they're saying they could take this GMC. I know that it's like somebody could probably take this and make it into something. I just, this one's a little too far gone to probably be saved. This car, I'm actually going to sell off to a pick and pull place because I think this could actually be something you could repair up but I'm gonna end up tearing down that shed anyway, so we'll get that out of there. The Bobcat's actually sitting inside the one garage portion. We are going to sell off the Jeep. We're going to pull out the Massey Ferguson, put them in storage until we can actually find buyers and then just kind of get all this stuff moved out. I'm not too worried. I'm probably gonna have to make a couple trips to get this stuff out of here anyway. I just didn't bring my trailer. I will have to play a little bit of hide and seek to find out where this septic tank is though for the plumbing system. There really wasn't any maps that I was given that could have shown where it's at. I'm thinking it's probably somewhere in this area. I just, it's kind of hard because we don't have any maps of what's actually underneath all of this. Hopefully though, we can dig it out with the bucket. I'm gonna see if I maybe could find some blueprints to see where they might've had the plumbing lines go to. But for starters, I'm going to call, get these things removed, get the bobcat, which is in the shed fired up, and we could start doing some demo work. I want to get these two garages and everything else out of here first so we can have a clean slate and then start working on getting that septic tank dug up. I'm going to make some phone calls and hopefully at least this stuff will be out of here. This is definitely going to be challenging, but three, two, one. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Up the ramp. Here we go. In the trailer. In the trailer. Perfect. Nice! Whew, that is a, that's a heavy truck. This one, I'm gonna try to maybe push it down the hill and just see if it'll start, because if we can get one of these things to actually just pop off, I'll just grab a gas can and we'll just feed a fuel line or something. That one might actually start. But yeah, get that piece of junk out of here, bud. We'll, we'll see you later. I gotta get the rest of these cars dealt with. Let's give you a quick push start and I'll jump inside once we can get it rolling. Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. I got it! I mean, it sounds like an absolute nightmare, but hey, at least we got it started, right? Uh, I don't have brakes. I don't have brakes. I don't have brakes. Hit the road! 
<laughs> yeah, we're just gonna leave that there. <laughs> Note to self, if you're driving an old car out of a shed, do not, I repeat, do not just not check the brakes. Bad idea. I didn't actually show you guys this, but I have what is used to crush the rocks. It's basically a big jackhammer, but for the skid steer. I'm gonna tear apart all the concrete that's on this. And then using a bucket on the skid steer, we'll just kind of scoop all of our stuff into the pile. It's already over here. And then we can just clear this out. Checking back in guys, we just now are gonna be starting the demolition process on this building. This is gonna get loud. And I mean, it's gonna get real, real loud, real quickly. Just kind of breaking down the side structure of the wall. Oh. Pretty much all I'm doing is taking out the structure stability of the building. Jesus, that's got some kickback to it. We've already taken out the garage door. Like it's just kind of sitting up there. The brackets are still thin, but we've already taken out the garage door. We've already emptied out the whole garage. We're pretty much just going to be scrapping the rest of the building. And then I'm gonna have to bring out my bucket. And we'll just scoop all the rest of this broken stone and glass and wood, and we'll just push it into the pile of masonry and gravel that's sitting right next to us. And hopefully, if we're lucky, we can actually send it as a recyclable material to the local material supplier as like a really bad gravel that can reuse the building. I highly doubt it though, but hey, we can always try, right? Always be very careful when you're doing stuff like this, guys. You do not know when a building might be able to fall on you. Make sure you have your hearing protection, your eye protection. This should be all that we have left to pretty much break down. We're down to the last portions. I pushed the building over. I'm gonna at least push this gravel pit pile. It's on the left. And then hopefully that gets it out of the way. We got the Jeep and the Massey Ferguson out. Everything else I took down to my storage unit downtown. Let's just drop you, get the hydraulics out and the bucket. Yep, should still be on the other side of the board. Sadly, this skid steer does not have very good weight distribution for rocks in the bucket. I did not buy any weights, or I did not rent any weights at least. So I have to be very careful when dumping this. Whoa! But I'm gonna start transferring over these rocks and then hopefully I'll be able to start cleaning out the inside of that cabin. And if I do end up finding it, I'll find the plan so I can really locate where on earth this septic system actually is located. I don't really want to play hide and seek peekaboo and just start digging holes around the property where I really don't have to. If that other shed wasn't as close to the cabin as it was, I'd almost just burn it down and call in for a burn, but we're surrounded by dead trees and an actual wooden building, so I can't really do that. I'll kind of keep brainstorming, but I got this whole pile to shift over, so I'll take care of that, and when I get an idea of how I want to demolish the other shed, I'll let you guys know. A few moments later. That at least kind of gets this area out of the way so we have some more room to work with i think honestly i'm just probably gonna do what i was thinking in the first place because structurally this shed is like i'm surprised it's still standing these four posts are really what's holding it into the ground there's no real braces behind this wall besides the one that sections off the corners if you take the door off and you chop out these five corner posts you really can just push the shed over after all has been said and done i tried to divide them as evenly as i could some wood is like there's holes in them and it's bowed it's cracked but I stacked up as much of the wood as I could to maybe see if we could reuse it or sell it off as barn wood. The shed has been completely demolished, destroyed. We kind of flattened out as much as we could, but that should take care of all of the building sites on this place besides just the cabin. I'm gonna run inside the house, start cleaning on the inside, get that stove out of there since I still haven't taken care of that. And hopefully I'll be able to find the plans in here to actually get the septic tank's rough location. So we could fix that. <laughs> that is ripe. Ooh, we could fix that problem. One thrown out back and probably a couple ER visits after this later. Our electrical system works in the place. Still haven't found where on earth these plans are. It's up in the loft. Check that box, check this box. Gotta be something around here that has the building plans in it. Check inside the, ch get the check inside the chest, maybe? Oh, what's that? Aha, X marks the spot. Let's have a look-see. So looking north, which is 
We're, we're facing towards the west. It says it's 15 yards to the west and five yards to the south. That should be where it sits. There's a water line. I would suppose this is probably connected somewhere. The bathroom. Anybody in here has been in band. You know, marching band is probably one of the best tools that you've ever had because you know your eight to five step sizes are going to get you exactly 10 yards. So we got mark time. Mark up and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, halt. And then five this way. One, two, three, four, five. Well, hey, if that is indeed correct, we are right on top of where we were itching. I did not plan that. All right, let's get that mini excavator unloaded. And then we should just be able to dig right around in this spot. And we should find that septic tank. I'm thinking it needs to A, be emptied out or B, be replaced. Probably would be in my best interest to hook the truck back up to the trailer if you're gonna unload it. It is a true thing though, guys. I'd never underestimate the power of a marching band person's feet. When your job is literally to keep your upper body from your waist up as literally as stable as possible, you really learn how to walk on the ground. It's fantastic. Then you add a bass drum like me and yeah, that's what happens. Straps undone, tilt this thing up, start digging. I'm still kind of learning the controls on one of these things, so I guarantee you I'm going to mess this up at some point. I do really wish that I would have brought at least a dump trailer so I could have taken this thing out as I went. But that's all right. We'll work with what we got. Put our blade down for stability reasons. I'm kind of trying to learn how to do all this stuff, and I know Spencer runs mini excavators as well as just an excavator. So I kind of try and learn or by watching him do this. But as my knowledge stated, this should be right in this area. This thing shouldn't be too far down, but I've also been proven wrong before. It's going to be a very weird example, but I'm thinking that this tank is probably going to be about as deep as a burial vault. You guys don't know what that is. That is the actual concrete casing that goes around a casket when it is buried during a funeral like when they drop the casket down in the ground it's the concrete structure that you put the casket in it's like a box for it like i said really weird example but my dad's a funeral director so i kind of uh been engraved in that field my for a good portion of my life haha <laughs> but i'm just i'll just kind of keep scooping though until like hey oh hang on a minute what's that is that what i think it is maybe hold on you're at I'm still working on how to like drag this thing back and like keep my bucket level. I I want to say that that's it, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Oh yeah, that's the tank. That's the tank. Jeez, and how far over does it go though? That's my question. Am I able to reach all the way over there? Oh yeah, we got it. We got it. The plan of attack is I want to see whether or not this septic tank's just full or if I actually need to like full blown replace it. It looks like it's in structurally good shape. But I just don't know. Let's see if I can scoot. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I guess all we can really do is call a vacuum truck and see if we could suck out the septic system because that was. <coughs> that was right. <coughs> oh, that is right. <coughs> oh. I don't know what the heck that was. Something's rotten in that. Well, I'm, I'm gonna call a vac trailer and we're gonna see if we can clean that sucker out because I mean it's It's solid concrete. It's not like this is a piece of plastic I mean it'd probably be a good idea to switch it out, but I don't I'll see if I can reuse the system a few moments later All right guys, I had to do a little bit of uh, equipment shuffling We did end up getting the vacuum truck over. They also brought out their pressure washer so we're gonna try and once we get the actual tank sucked out, we're gonna clean it out completely. But that septic tank, man, it stinks. We pulled the lid off that sucker and I'm gonna have to get on some PPE and basically a gas mask if I'm gonna even remotely wanna go over there cause it stinks. But once we get this taken care of, this should helpfully fix my plumbing problem in the cabin itself. And then we won't even have to worry about any other systems because the rest of it, I'm pretty much all gonna redo uh, structurally myself. Yeah, we have to suck all of that gunk out of there. That's not gonna be fun. Not in the slightest. Get their little engine started. Grab our vacuum hose. Perfect. I know this is the leaf blower, but we're gonna use what we have because I don't have a vacuum. And let's start sucking all this junk out of here. Mm, stuff stinks though. Mm, mm, it is right. 
Still got a little bit left, but we've cleaned out the majority of that corner. And then this segment on the opposite side, it's already been emptied out as well. This is like a two lid system. But I'm just gonna keep cleaning this out. Look at all that build up though on the side walls. <laughs> <coughs> oh, that is nasty. We're gonna use the Andy Clean that he's completely provided as our soap, and we're gonna clean off the side of this tank. This is nasty. But look at our inlets. Our inlet is pretty much completely clogged inside this thing. We'll clean that out and see whether or not we can get our sewage part to, yep, that water on the bottom, it's, well, we at least got the majority of this or pretty much all the septic system filled out. And now it's just left with the water. That's what I'm hoping is all we needed to do. We're just cleaning this thing out and we can fill it all and we can cover it all back up and come back and actually maintenance it unlike the previous owners who did absolutely nothing about it. There's that. Let's run inside quick. We'll do a quick toilet flush. Ooh, st still stinks in here. <laughs> Well, it actually flushes. There's fresh water coming in. I know we have a well that works. It seemed to have worked just fine. I mean, the smell is kind of dissipating a little bit. I'll have to just run some water, make sure all this stuff, turn on the faucets. We'll just have it run, cycle through, put in some cleaner. I think we have some in the kitchen. Yep, we have our drain cleaner. So put a couple things in there. I'll also put in some pine saw. Put some drain cleaner in you. Some drain cleaner in you. And now we'll just let those uh, sit with the water in them for a little bit, try and clean that out. Yep, we have flow, and the system's running this way. If I look at that map again, I bet you for legality reasons, because there's a, there's a couple houses out here, and they all kind of connect into one lagoon. I think it's this one down here. I'm pretty sure that that line comes from this tank. The tank's right there on the side of the house, but then there's a line that's drilled all the way down to this. That's probably what it was. So I guarantee you the outlet's somewhere down there. But it looks like we have flow, so let's set back our top of the tank. And at this point now, we just basically have to fill the thing back in. We'll see you guys here in hopefully a little bit when I have uh, pretty much gotten this hole filled back in or close to, because this is going to be quite a bit of dirt. But this last bucket should, in theory, cover the rest of this. And I would be correct. Very, very nice. Now it's just a matter of flattening it out and filling in the rest of the hole, which I guarantee you is probably going to be about 500 times easier with the Bobcat. Beautiful, beautiful. Just, I'll kind of get the rest of these dirt mounds out of here. Might just move it into the back or I'll dump it over into the lake. Do I recommend driving over a concrete box that has a hollow center? Not necessarily, but it does look really good. I'm just actually going to now mark that, that that's where that is. So for the meantime, what I'll do is I'll stick this little tiki torch in the ground. I know it's, I think the tank's like right there, but we'll set it, we'll set the marker so I know exactly the area of where to put something official. And then we can watch out wherever we build something that we don't build either right on top of this or something heavy gets to drive on this all the time. We're gonna let the back truck get itself out of here, take his pressure washer with him. Then I can just park the rest of my stuff in the tree line so it gets out of the way and we can head home, clean up, or actually we might clean up in the cabin itself, try and see whether or not the running water, which I forgot to shut off. Nyeh, don't need to be running my water bill up. Don't do that. Actually, it doesn't smell that bad in here anymore. Nice. But I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you all so much for checking out part two. We still have part three, which is going to be finishing up our renovations, getting some new buildings put up out here. But I wanted to get you guys some content on this plumbing system that we were working on. But with that all being said, we will see you guys all in the next one. Be sure to check out the Boomstick Club for all the up-to-date content from me and the gang. You already know who is in it. This is the Rental Man out.